Uh, oh, by the way, I, I will say this. Danny didn't. Danny didn't. I want to thank. I want to thank the church for their giving, for Tim Griffin. Um, we we took over thirteen hundred dollars. So I think it was thirteen fifty. We took in over thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, the benefit is uh, afternoon starts at three o'clock. Um, tickets are twenty five dollars if you want to go to the benefit. We we up fronted enough money so Brother Bud can get this thing rolling, and and every penny is going to go to uh, to Tim Griffin. And I remember the last time Brother Bud uh, was involved with a uh, with a benefit like this it was. It was up at um, College Church a number of years ago, gathering some of the same musical people. And whether you realize it or not, I, I, I'll never forget that night, bud. That was the night you met me, you introduced me to Joe and the guy from Ludlow that died. And pre premier pedal guitarist in Nashville. He played in all the all the big bands there. He was one of the ones that played them. But as the guy that group, that musical group that Brother Bud was involved with them, them people, of musicians that were there that were playing with big name groups. I was amazed. And and uh, I thought I, I remember we're all standing in the church. What we need is a revival meeting. <laughs> Praise God. I don't know who, uh, who, who picked that song. Heather, you, you got right where the heart of God is right now for this house. I, I'm finding it very difficult. I'm finding it difficult to stand here and preach to you. Who is you guys don't need preaching to. What we need in this of everything is prepared for us. And I was thinking when some of the thoughts that were there in the, in the midst of it awake me from my sleep. The truth of the matter is the world makes us walk around sleepwalking. But we're asleep to what God is really wanting to do in our lives, what God really wants in our lives. And, in, and we, are, we, are much, we are much more. One of the problems we've had with the church is the church has rocked us to sleep. Our home is heaven. Our home is in God. Amen. And his home is in us. Yes, Jesus said, I'll go our many mansions. I'm not trying to preach another message. I'm just trying to say, he said, in my the truth of the matter is, where did God come to live? In a man. Came to live in a man. And he came to live into mankind. That was God's divine plan. Do everything else but do what God wants. And the reason the world keeps getting worse and worse is because of the fact that we haven't really done our job. Really, you know, and I'm not talking about running all over the world preaching the gospel. We've tried that for 2,000 years and it hasn't worked. that will gather people faster than the presence of God Amen. in our lifetime in 1993 somewhere in a period, that period of time when Toronto started Toronto it, the, the truth of the matter was that word w was prophesied years before at the tail end of the latter wide revival 
or a revival that would affect the world that would come to eastern Canada. And it came in 93. And, and I, I perfect there. I don't think everything was right, but I think God was trying to show us something. He's trying to show us that if we would rise and shine, that the nations would come. And we've seen the nations come when we started. You saw the nations come. When, when we had the last little thing down in the lake, hundreds, the thousands, they came because there was an expression of the presence of God. It doesn't matter how it bad it turned out. Even stop. The issue that God is trying to teach us as a people is the fact that if we would allow the Spirit of God to totally captivate our hearts, our minds, yes. we gathered here. Think about this. If every time we gathered here, there was some in the house that would set off the fire alarm. Or flying on the roof. You say, oh, well, those are just stories. The, I want you to the power of God. I want you to stop doubting the purposes of God. In your lifetime, God can do that. I keep saying to the Lord, you promised me, and so you're going to have to keep me alive until I see it. And sometimes I think we read the Bible, beloved, and that was really something, but we don't really read it and grasp it as potentiality, as reality in the power of God. Sometimes I think we in that when Jesus came, God gave up on his plan. No, Jesus was in the plan. He was always destined to be the head. He was always destined to be the head of the church. And my focal point at this present time is to see a church. Uh, 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 an evangelistic outlook for the whole whole world. That what gave me my limit. Hey, Paul said, "My mate." He said to the church at Corinth, "He said, listen, I'm not going to go into another man's territory." He said, "God gave me a mate." That's the problem with most of us. We're trying to do more than what God told us to do. And we want we got to do what God. That's what He equips us for. Amen. That's it. Yes, He'll not equip you for everything else. He'll equip you to do the job that He calls you to do, or He puts you in a place to do. Amen. And so I challenge us tonight. It's not up to me to 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 draw, to to give you the pep talk every week right. to get you going. I've said it over and over. Go to the if if you go to the symphony, okay, the guy in how every instrument in the place should should react, how it should sound, and all that. But he's not the guy playing it. He's just the director. The matter is, a pastor's job primarily is to be a director. And you allow the Spirit of God to infill you. You allow the Spirit of God to quicken you. 
allow this, the, the Spirit of God to work through you. You are the one that's supposed to do it. Do you say absolutely? There's nothing wrong with that. But what's better than it happens where you're at at any given moment? Give you more opportunities where you are. The, that scripture means go you in. What part of the world did God give you? Where did God put you? So go into that world. Preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. That's all he told us to do. Well, while, I, while I'm talking, maybe I, can, maybe I can get out of my soapbox again. Most of it is between the gospel and the gospel of the kingdom. It's two different gospels. One's a gospel of salvation. And the gospel of the kingdom is to teach you how to rule and reign not only your own life, but those around you. Because the Bible says a man that can rule his own spirit is more powerful, is stronger than a man who can take a city. The scripture says that. It means a city that's walled for protection. Say God is after me to do my part. Are you all right? I, um, I picked up the book tonight. It's 8.30 and I'm going to take 10 minutes and I'm going home. I think. I didn't finish I didn't finish the table of show. But the Lord began to talk to me about the altar of in And so, I, I, no reason why, just because the book goes from the table of showbread to the altar of incense, why I just can't jump a couple of pages and go there. And I give other ones opportunities to share. But I really would like to jump back to the ta table of showbread. You remember on the, ta on the table of showbread, two borders on the top, two crowns. On the top, hand breadth wide. And Brother Kelly, in his book, Teachers of the Tabernacle, uh, utilized that to teach on the fivefold ministry out of Ephesians 4. I don't really understand, like we should, functionally, about. And I think sometime around the first beginning of the year, right after, I'm going to jump back and I'm going to step into the fivefold ministry and, and talk about it a little bit. But um, that, that will come, come sometime uh, probably after the first of the year. I'm, I'm right at this point preparing my heart and my mind for the year. I, 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 let me say this. We do this we do it by tradition. Um, I know that January 1st is a new year for isn't a new year for the Lord. And so but there is nothing wrong with setting goals uh, um, setting setting and well, again we're going to have New Year's Eve service here. We're going to have a We'll, we'll again close the service. I know probably with either communion or a, or a party, one of the two. You know, one hands and we scared scared the neighborhood. You know, we can we can do that. That's that I don't care what we do as long as we praise the Lord. Amen. 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 For the beginning of a new year, and um, so we will be doing that. And and sister. Pulled, out, pulled her authority out of the sack and asked uh, Corey if he would share 
leave. So, <laughs> I've uh, so we've already got one one of the young people who's going to see for a few minutes. But uh, I'm looking forward to that. I want to talk about the old a little bit. Um, one of the things I'm going to I would just want to say another thing. It's shittim wood. It's covered with gold. It's a picture of humanity covered with divine nature. Peter said that we got the Holy Ghost. God has given us all things that pertain unto life. So you got the Holy Ghost. You got all there is. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I always chuckle about people want to want to die and see Jesus. This way, Jesus said, "If you've seen me, you've seen the Father." You know. Some folks got the idea that they're going to go to heaven. They're going to see the three chairs up there. You know, there's which is spirit, which you can't see. And then they're going to see the Holy Ghost, spirit that you can't see. And when they die, they're not taking with me with them. So how are they going to see anyway? Because I have no eyes. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to give you a Randall Worley statement. I'm not going to tell you what to think, but I'm going to tell you what to think. And that's a problem with most of us we haven't thought. And the only visible one in heaven is Jesus. Resurrection life, he wasn't always visible. He appeared and disappeared. He was here for 40 days in the resurrection life, and he only showed up eight But he was here all the time. See? Can you hear the gears grinding, bud? I can hear them. And most of us want to be like the Jesus that walked on the shores of Galilee. But what for 40 days? The one who was no longer empowered by blood, but he was empowered by He walked in the Spirit. He walked through the Spirit. And so when we come to divine nature, I begin to think that all of us have a very shallow outlook on what it is that is put within us when we get the Holy Ghost. If we're real Pentecostal, it's just the gifts. But nowhere in the Bible does it say that for a believer, gifts are proof that you got the Holy Ghost. He said, you shall receive power. Power for what? Power to become like God. Power to be God-like. You can't be God-like before that. look at this golden altar. A couple things I want to say about that. The first thing is called an altar. Every time you hear the word altar, you think sacrifice. Everything. Offering. golden altar I, I haven't got time All right, I, I promise you I wouldn't take more than time I've already gone past that limit but in that altar if you go read Exodus chapter 30 verses 34 to 38 you'll find in that altar in the pan of the altar was four Spices. They were just spices 
A lot of them were perfumes that were made for women. A lot of them just natural things they used on a natural basis. But what God commanded them was to take equal portions and grind them together till they were powder. Now I'm sure that once this mixture put inside of there, there was a fragrance. Are you listening? I had this I had this thought. Now I do something real spiritual. I really like I I I'm not a musician, but I love music. I love, I love a lot of different kinds of music. And when someone is talented and very good at it, I love music. I hear those things. So I do something very spiritual. I watch the voice. And you hear all different kinds, but I'm amazed at what God is, and I enjoy it too. I could almost do sing along with Mitch. But the issue is, the, we can all get caught up in it if it's really good. And it's got a It's got a fragrance. But God didn't tell him in there, so there's this kind of fragrance in my, in my area, in my church. He said, go out there to the brazen altar where all the blood and guts and fire and the wood. I want you to go out there and he said, I want you to get some of what was left over Everything's been burned. He said, I want you to get down in the bottom where the fire is, where, where the blood's been burned up, where the guts of the animals been burned up, where everything has been burned and consumed, and it's down there in the bottom of the, 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 the fire pit, down in the bottom. And he said, I want you to take the sensor and bring that fire in there and I want you to put the fire in that. And all of a sudden, there's a different fragrance. You say, what's that got to do with music? You can worship songs, good worship teams, good worship, but at the fire of God, come down into the midst of that and bring the fragrance of what God is after. It does not reach, it does not seep into the realms of his presence. Every God wants to put fire to it. We don't start the make the fire. The initial fire was started out there in the brazen altar by God himself. The sacrifice the very first one with the wood it was cut up and set in according to God's plan. They just didn't, they just didn't kill that animal you know and just throw him in there. Delicately, he was delicately Carved. When I was a kid, I used to like to go to the slaughterhouse. It was a couple miles from our place, and I used to love to go to. I used to like to go to the slaughterhouse. You say what for? Well, I like meat, and I used to like to watch them slaughter the cattle and and do what they had to. Do. It was the time for the rabbis to come over. The rabbi would go out 
of all the animals out there. And they would bring them in because when they would bring the animals in for you and I, they just brought them in and they walked through this thing and there was this black guy up there who had about that big and he had this sledge that was about 18 pounds and he'd just hit them on top of the head and they'd drag them out. But they didn't do that when the rabbi came. He went and he brought all, they brought them all in. Selected all out what he wanted. Then they nine legs together and they'd hook them up and drag them up in the air like this. And they'd be the awfulest howling and carrying on you ever heard. And then they'd reach under his robe and he'd pull out this knife. Had a blade about was about that long, and he'd go to that cow, all right, steer. They got their tongue hanging, on, dripping and sliming, and he'd reach up inside of there, and he'd go, that, and you never seen blood run so fast in all your life. You say, why are you telling us all of this? Because God has ways of doing things. And he wants everything set in order. Solomon had to get the house in order before the presence of God came in it. God wants us to get all the charismatic, crazy, crazy-matic attitude we got. God wants order in his house. He wants us ordered in his he wants to order our steps. Amen. Amen. It's just to walk the way we want and then hope God blesses it. He wants to put those things in order in his life. This altar of incense, fragrance that God looked for. The incense was called sweet incense. But out there at the brazen altar, when they burning all them animals, you ever held, heard, smelt meat burn? You ever been around where there was a bad fire and animals got burned? It stinks bad. But you know what God calls it? He called it a sweet smelling savor. God's looking for a fragrance out of us. Paul talked about having the fragrance. Something else about this. You know, I, I, I want to preach and I can't preach. I, I've already lied three times. I just looked at my watch. I want to say something else about this. This altar primarily is typifies prayer and worship. But we can have prayer but have no idea what we're praying about. Most people pray for stuff. And most people pray for God to do stuff that He's already done. And Paul had enough guts to say to the Romans, you, you pray and you don't know what you're praying for. But he said, God, God's on your side. He said the Spirit will pray with groanings and utterings. Because the Spirit prays according to the will of God. Amen. So most of us jumped on the bandwagon and we think that praying in tongues is the Spirit. No, it ain't. It can be. And it can't be. Paul said we we're to pray, but to pray with understanding. He said in chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, he said, if you pray, 
in the spirit, if you pray in tongues, that you get understanding. What good's it going to do you if you don't ever get any understanding? That's right. A little secret. Our lives as believers, as real spirit-filled believers, ought to be constant prayer. Sitting in a corner someplace praying. Our life ought to be a constant state of prayer. We always got to be aware of what God is telling us to do. Amen. Or we're praying, God help me hear what you want me to do. Amen. Anybody can praise, but I'm talking about another dimension of praise. I'm talking about praise where he's, where he's crowned, where he's brought to the uttermost. crowned in heaven, most of the time he's got to be crowned in our lives. And worship. Another thing I want to say about this table, the layout in the tabernacle, the table of this altar of incense is the item that's closest to the Ark of the Covenant. In fact, that the in positioning, it was right next to the veil. Yep. Yep. And if the veil was rent from the top to the bottom, and the veil was in the neighborhood of 40 inches thick, and, and 15, by 15 feet high, when it was rent from the top to the bottom, I'm surprised it did not incense down. Because this altar incense is only 18 inches by 18 inches. Anybody ever have a table? 18 inches. You set it up. How easy it knocks over. I could knock this thing over if I hit it hard enough. It's an 18 by 18. And when it's closest to that place, the presence of God is. It tells us it's of utmost importance in the lives of prayer, praise, and worship. The truth about worship primarily means, God, I bend to my need to you in everything you want. Can I lie for another five minutes? <laughs> oh, it's only 12 minutes to nine. I just want to read something that Brother Kelly said. On page 67, if anybody's got their book, under the type of the description, a diagram reveals the piece of furniture in the shape of a cross, the golden altar was at the very center. And in the heart of the tabernacle, the ministry of prayer, praise, and in the intercession of Christ and the church at the very heart of God. The altar was at the end of the holy place, 20 by 10 by 10. It equals a year church age if you want to put it in a time slot. The most important thing, as we are down at the end of this period, now I can teach on time if you wanted me to. But the truth of the matter, Jesus was born, our, our calendar does not relate to his time, but Jesus was born in 4 B.C., According to our calendar. So he was crucified sometime in the period of 29 AD. So if he said in two days 
he'll heal us, and then the third day he'll raise us up. The third day isn't here yet. Think. Not to think, I'm telling you, think. 29 AD, or, 20, or, or 2029, sometime in that period, will be about the time he was born. It wasn't until 50 days later that the church began. So as we close, this second day. The three that are going to be most important are prayer, praise, and procession with Christ. I believe this is the hour wants to come and visit. Jesus wants to come and visit us is unimaginable. Yes, Lord. Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 16, he said this. He said, I've run the race. I've fought the fight. And heretofore down laid up for me and to all of those who love his appearance. King James Bible's singular. The Greek is in the plural. So what's his appearings? Well, Paul had one of those one day in 2 Corinthians 12. He said, I once knew a man about 14 years ago who whether in the spirit or out of the body, I don't know. But he said he was caught up into the third dimension or into that dimension. God appeared in his life. And I believe as we close this age, we get serious with some of us about our callings. The truths of the golden altar are being experienced at the end of this age. The ark is the throne. That's Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. A man child, a corporate son. That's caught up into throne room dimension. That doesn't mean he's going anywhere. It means he's come up to the fleshly dimension till the very throne of God is established in his life. Yes, sir. This is the high priest at the right hand of God, the throne of God. It does not mean that Jesus here in the right hand and the father's over here because he said the father was in him and he also said that those came in our lives that both he and the father is in the Holy Ghost Amen. he said if you want to see the father see me Jesus is the high priest at the right hand of the throne of God. If the place of God's rule is inside a man, the right hand means the place of authority. That's when God gets full and complete authority. What do you think? And prayer and praise were central to the ministry also. Those overcomers. What do we have to overcome? We don't have to overcome Donna or Helen, or Bud, or any of you. The biggest thing to be overcome in my life is not allowing God to have his way. Most of us have our way and hope it's okay with God. Those overcomers in his throne have lives centered in prayer and praise. And their ministry will overcome the veil of flesh. Oh my God.
sing a song years ago back in the 60s. Shut in with God in the secret place. There it beholding his face. Gaining to run in the race I love in with God. of incense will overcome the veil of the flesh. Finally, the ministry of this altar is closer and will bring us closer to the throne and the realm of the holies than anything else. Also, that the term altar teaches a position of sacrifice and to prayer and praise. What's my word? You know what the Lord said? The Lord said obedience is better than sacrifice. If God challenges to prayer, and prayer isn't telling, asking God for a new car, heal my body, that isn't the kind of prayer. Nope. You get enough of the Holy Ghost in you, you won't have to worry about That's healing right. your body. Healed. Right. Divine health is far superior yes, right. to healing. That's right. Amen. The Bible says that Christ dieth no more. no more. Christ in you and me is the hope of all glory. Amen. Yep. Or all of How are we going to get it? Obedience. Amen. We're going to have to discipline ourselves. Does that mean you're going to stop doing? No, you, Danny's got to go to work whether he likes it or not. A man don't work, he don't eat. And Danny likes to eat. If I followed him around too long, if I go on too many more vacations, I'll be 250. I can't keep up with it. <laughs> Obedience is better. Yes, the altar of incense is a fragrance of Christ. What do you look at? Somebody asked me last night, what's your dream? I said, it hasn't changed. It never has changed. What are you looking for? I'm looking for a church that's full of the light of the glory of God. People who the radiation of his presence so radiates out of their life. It's an undeniable fact. That God is in them. Father, I just thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you for this people, God. Lord, not only this people, Father, that there's someone on the internet. And I pray, God, that you will their hearts. Put a passion in the innermost of them for your presence. Let prayer, praise, and worship, God, become the central thing in the heart of the church. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Said, Amen. Amen. We'll see you all on Sunday.